will be for unity. My vote will be for bringing our state together and for resolving once and for all the removal of the Confederate flag from these grounds. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we gather today on this 4th of July 2015 at your state house, the 239th anniversary of the Declaration of Our Independence. Fellow South Carolinians, it is appropriate that I begin with the words that birthed our great nation. Words that by your presence here today, we redeclare and say them with me, that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Fellow South Carolinians, we gather here today on the 4th of July, not to witness history, but to make history. It is time and it is fitting that the only sovereign flags of our nation and our state fly on these grounds. These past few weeks have been a very difficult time in South Carolina. That young man thought he would start a race war. He thought he would advance the cause of white supremacy under a banner that flies on our state house grounds. He researched and chose his target, an historic African-American church, Emanuel AME Church, the mother church. Well, he picked the wrong church. He picked the wrong people. He picked the wrong state. There will be no race war. Such hate has no place in the hearts of the people of South Carolina. We, the people of South Carolina, of all faiths, colors, and creeds, are a people who care about their neighbor, who are all of all faiths, colors, and creeds. We are a people who gathered in love and prayer by the thousands to support each other and to heal our broken hearts. We as a people have been led by the extraordinary and faithful strength of the victim's family in their message of forgiveness. They have led our state as an example to the nation and the world that hate won't win. With their example and with our faith in God, we shall overcome. Reverend Senator Clementa Pinckney, Cynthia Hurd, Sharonda Coleman Singleton, Tawanza Sanders, Ethel Lance, Susie Jackson, DePayne Middleton Doctor, Reverend Daniel Simmons and Myra Thompson. As our president said, good people, decent people, God-fearing people, people so full of life and so full of kindness, people who ran the race, who persevered. And I know with all of you here, they are people whom South Carolina shall never forget. My dear friend and colleagues, Senator Reverend Clemente Pinckney. Clem and I were, were in the same freshman legislative class together. He was elected at the age of 23. He was wise beyond his years, and his faith granted him a peace in everything he did. He was a man who loved Jesus with all his heart and was committed to his faith, his family, his wife Jennifer and daughters Milana and Eliana, and his church, Mother Emanuel AME, and his state, South Carolina. He once said, across the South, we have a deep appreciation of history. We haven't always had a deep appreciation of each other's history. Whatever that banner may have meant to some in the history, it does not represent that today. I know what Clem would be telling me and all of his colleagues if he were here. It was right to remove the Confederate flag from the State House grounds before June 17, 2015. And for those same reasons, it is right to do it now. He would tell us all, he would tell us all for the sake of all in our state, do not lose this moment. If it takes the hate-filled murder of nine innocents to open our eyes to the pain that banner inflicts on so many in our state, don't fail to act. We must always remember and never forget this time in South Carolina's history. 
and what it took to bring about change. We in South Carolina are better as a people. And Clem would want us to move from changing a monument on the South Carolina State House grounds to monumental change throughout our great state of South Carolina. He would ask us all, he would ask us all to fulfill our sacred and constitutional responsibility to provide a quality of funding and more than a minimally adequate education for all of South Carolina's children. He would call us all to provide access to quality and affordable health care for everyone in South Carolina. He would ask us to ensure that everyone's voice is heard on election day by making it easier, not harder, for the people to vote. Now let me turn to an argument that you don't hear very often when it surrounds heritage and the Confederate flag. Let me turn and speak to those in South Carolina who believe their devotion to Confederate heritage compels them to advocate to keep the flag where it flies now. As a combat veteran serving our nation at war, and a member of a family who has fought in combat in every major conflict since before our nation's birth, to include an ancestor, Colonel William Nelson, who was killed at the crater at Petersburg. As a son of several Confederate veterans, I understand heritage. And to honor one's heritage, to honor the dead who fought under that banner, to honor the terms of surrender, it compels one to furl the flag forever. The banner flying on our state house grounds, that banner is the battle flag of the Army of Northern Virginia. If the commander of that Army of Northern Virginia, General Robert E. Lee, were here today, he would tell the sons of Confederate veterans now, as he told their fathers then, furl the flag forever. The formal surrender agreement signed by Lee and other Confederate commanders on April 9, 1865, 150 years ago, required that all troops shall march by brigade and detachments to a designated point to stack their arms and deposit their flags and thence march to their homes. To honor heritage is to acknowledge defeat, abide by the terms of surrender, and keep the flag furled forever. Yes! To fly the flag, it violates that agreement. It dishonors the memories of those that fought and died for a lost cause. Indeed, our own General Wade Hampton spoke to a gathering of his Confederate Legion here in Columbia, South Carolina on July 12, 1875. In a tribute to the flag of his Legion, he gave a speech entitled, The Duty of the Present. To the sons of Confederate veterans, today you would do well to heed his words when he said, Though it will never again brave the battle and the breeze, yet as long as one shred of its battle-scarred folds cling to another, it will tell you in language more eloquent than words of the imperishable renown you won for it and for yourselves. It will speak constantly to your hearts of our dead comrades, and it will serve to remind you always when you furl it forever, you pledge your soldierly honor to observe and violate the terms upon which you surrender. To fly the Confederate battle flag on these state house grounds is to fail to honor one's Confederate heritage. It is to fail to honor the dead who fought under those colors. It is to fail to honor the terms of surrender. It is to fail to honor the words of what Robert E. Lee said after the war, when he called on everyone that we all should unite in an effort to obliterate the effects of war and restore the blessings of peace. Lee's orders in the terms of surrender were to furl the flag forever. He urged his fellow Southerners in 1989 not to keep open the sores of war, but to follow the example of those nations who endeavored to obliterate the marks of civil strife and to commit to oblivion the feelings it engendered. To the sons of Confederate vet veterans, listen to Lee and Hampton. We should all unite under an honest effort to obliterate the effects of war and restore the blessings of peace. Furl this flag forever and pledge your soldierly honor to observe and violate the terms upon which you surrendered. Next week is an important week in South Carolina's history, and as we begin, as your General Assembly begins to debate 
to remove the Confederate flag from the State House grounds on Monday, your voice is needed now more than ever. Members of your General Assembly are not just being threatened with votes to oust them in the next election. They are being physically threatened if they vote to remove the flag. True. Please know that me and my fellow colleagues in the South Carolina General Assembly, we will not be intimidated by hate. Amen. Yeah. 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 We need to come together in South Carolina, and you all are doing that today and have been doing that. It is your work that is making the difference for the future of our great state. And we are and will be an example for the nation, Amen. for civil discourse, for understanding and peaceful demonstration. Hate won't win in South Carolina. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I'm reminded, a good friend of mine reminded me the other day of, of a great saying by a great civil rights and social justice leader, a South Carolinian we can all be proud of, Majeska Simpkins. She said, she gave good direction. It was good then, it's great now. Amen. We have a job laid out for us, ladies and gentlemen. There's no sitting down time. Let your representatives know. Call them, let them hear from you. This front lawn of our state house belongs to everyone. Yes. 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 No one in our state should come to their state house and be confronted by symbols of hate, oppression, and slavery. Yes. Now you should all know, and I'm sure if you're following the news, hearing about, well, we're going to remove the Confederate flag, but we've got another Confederate flag we want to put up there instead. Let me be clear. No flags. No flags. The only flags are our U.S. flag and our state flag. No flags and no flag pole. There is only one flag we all pledge allegiance to. We all pledge allegiance to one flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you. May God bless America, and may God bless the great state of South Carolina. Thank Amen. You.